So I'm standing next to four feed bins. These four bins take care of the pigs, the feed requirements for the pigs in the two rooms in the single building that is over off, off of the video. And you can see there's two flexible augers. They pull the feed from each hopper, bring it into the feed lines within the structure, and then it's distributed with more augers all the way down the whole length of the building. So the feed is probably the largest single cost that most contract swine growers encounter. It's very important for them to control temperatures within the structure, within the thermo neutral zone for pigs so that they don't waste feed. If it's too cold inside, the pigs are going to eat much more feed than they need. Why? Just to generate heat to stay warm. If it's too hot inside, they're not going to eat enough. They're not going to grow. It's going to take much longer to market. Studies show that there could be as much as a, an additional month of, of uh, production required if temperatures, hot temperatures can't be controlled. In a building like this, there's very little difference between winter and summer on the inside of the building because of the environmental control system and the ventilation system's design and management's operation of that. Feed costs are so high that it's important to maintain a uniform temperature in the building. If the temperature in the building is too low, the pigs are going to eat more to maintain their body temperature, just like people are going to do. If the temperature is too high in the building, the pigs are going to lose their appetite, they're not going to eat, and they're going to take longer, sometimes much longer, before they're at market weight. Studies show that it can be as much as 30 or 40 days longer in old production systems with poor indoor temperature control. In a modern facility like we have here, the feed conversion efficiency is, is uh, optimized, so, and the way it's optimized is by controlling the temperature. Because we have a modern ventilation system with very good environment control and managers that understand how to maintain and operate the system. So if we talk a little bit about efficiency in a production system like this, what's efficiency? Well, it's maximizing the output for the minimum amount of input. So on a ventilation fan, that's called ventilation efficiency. It's how many CFM of airflow per watt of energy, electricity that's used to drive the fan. When it comes to the pork production system, the primary metric is feed conversion efficiency. How many kilograms or pounds of feed are used for every kilogram or pound of meat that's produced? Temperature is the critical criteria that, the, that controls a pig's appetite. If the temperature is cold, the pig eats more. That means they're eating much more feed, but they're still producing roughly the same number of pounds of meat. So your cost just got much higher. The efficiency went down. Same thing on high temperature. If the temperature is very hot, they're just not eating very much. Feed conversion efficiency in that case is actually usually very good. However, they're taking forever to grow enough to go to market, and so they're spending much more time in the building, which reduces the system's overall productivity and efficiency. So you can see here right now the curtain, the tunnel curtain is dropping down a little bit. That's because it probably at least one more fan came on. Why is it opening? To maintain a, a uniform velocity of air going in, somewhere between 600 feet per minute and 1,000. And when I put my fan, my hand in front of this, I can really feel the airflow. Uh, and you've already got the information on calibrated fingers and hot wire anemometers. As you can see, this is really moving now. So the, the system is, is uh, changing over to a temperature control mode and it's going to bring in a lot more air. And it's interesting, he's got a little problem here. It's hanging. So what we have here is the tunnel curtain now. It's opened more than when we first arrived, but when I put my hand over it, I can still feel a substantial velocity of air over my hand going into the building. It's designed to be always operated, operating at about 600 to 1,000 feet per minute, and uh, that promotes good mixing of the air into the room to make a nice vortex, and then it's pulled down the whole length of the building by the ventilation fans. All right, so the main idea for ventilation is that we want to provide fresh air to the animals. We want to remove odor, dust, various toxic gases. And the trick to doing that when we have high ventilation rates, such as in tunnel ventilation mode, it's relatively straightforward. We open up one end of the building, we turn on most of, or all of the fans at the other end, and a lot of fresh air, much, much more air than is necessary to remove 
the pollutants comes into the building. But we have all that air in tunnel ventilation specifically to remove body heat from the animals to try to make them feel an effective temperature which is lower than the actual temperature of the air. Just like when you get step out of a shower and you're wet and there's a fan blowing, you're going to feel a chill. It's the same basic idea. We don't want to chill the pigs, but we want them to be comfortable. However, when we're not in tunnel ventilation mode, when we're just in a, a lower ventilation rate mode, we typically call that cross ventilation, or in this case, at this swine facility, it's, it's generated by sealing inlets. So the air enters through the soffits, goes up into the attic, and then by the number of fans that are running, which create a vacuum, it pulls it from the attic down through those air inlets where we saw the smoke coming out and distributes it into the building. We want to have enough inlets and we want them sized properly so that we get good distribution. The distribution is important so that all the animals get fresh air and that all of the spaces have fresh air to remove the toxic or the stale air that's already in there. So where you saw the smoke coming out of the inlet, going along the ceiling, and then coming down. Sorry. So the, the air comes in through the attic inlets, and you can see the smoke is showing you how the air is flowing. It's flowing along the ceiling. It hits an adjacent uh, jet of air coming from the next inlet. They meet in the middle, and then it's forcing down. So that's a really nice example of properly configured attic air inlet promoting good mixing throughout the entire building. You can only see it in this one inlet because this is where we have the smoke. But actually, this is what's happening in all of the spaces. The big challenge in ventilation is normally we can't see this airflow. So either we have to measure it with a hot wire anemometer, feel it with our skin, or in this case, run a smoke test to verify that everything's functioning properly. That was great. Do you want to just do it one more time? I don't know if I can, but I can try. <laughs> so where do you, you want me to start uh, all the way at the beginning or just on the cross ventilation? Uh, cross ventilation. Okay. So at lower ventilation rates, when we're not in tunnel mode, the system operates a little bit differently. The air isn't brought in through the tunnel curtains, but rather it's brought in through attic air inlets. So the air enters through the soffits, goes up into the attic, and then the vacuum from the fans pulls it through the inlets. If the inlets are operating properly, as you see here with the smoke blasting along the ceiling, that's promoting a good ceiling jet. That smoke is showing you how the jet's behaving. When it goes to the center towards, towards the other attic inlet, it drops down. That's because the jet from the other inlet and this jet are meeting and it's forcing it down. So that nice roll, that vortex, is the basis for good interior air mixing. What it's doing is putting that fresh air right down where it needs to go, but first giving it time to stay along the ceiling and modify its temperature so that the pigs aren't either too cold or too hot. And it's replacing all the stale air where you see that smoke going with nice fresh new air.